here is the um, the quilt that I decided to do and as you can see it's got the snails trail now the snails trail is in place of what would be the middle block in the storm at sea which I think is a square and a square and a square uh, but anyway so I put it in there now the challenge was this is an eight inch snails trail so I had to fit everything to it so I had to figure out you know, how to make the other sizes um, anyway I did lay this out as you can see it's on my quilt design software and to make this, it finishes at, as I said, 54 by 54. And I had to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 snails trail blocks. Um, I needed a total of 2 and 1 eighth yards of a colorful uh, fabric, which is what I used. And on the uh, white, it was 1 and 3 quarters. Now, I wanted to share with you what I chose because I like to use one color fabric that like reads as a lot of different colors. So this was the fabric that I chose for this Snail's Trail Storm at Sea because I figured, well, Storm at Sea, I still think of blues and greens and everything like that. So I really like this and I like kind of the fact there was a little bit of a difference in it. I have no idea who made this fabric. It was in my stash. I've probably had it for 15 or 20 years. I went ahead and picked this and then I went and picked this fabric. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of bubbles. Yeah, just because I thought again, you know, Storm at Sea, I'm still working on that, you know, nautical theme I guess so that's the fabric I chose. I talked to you about this great fabric I picked out. Well I loved it and I really don't know where I got it as I had said to you and it's probably 15 20 years old. Well I don't know if you noticed I've already kind of cut some of this up. Well I've cut up everything I can cut up and guess what I just discovered. I won't have enough fabric. So I'm panicking, so I go running through all my stash. Well, this is the beauty of having a really large stash. Lucky enough, I went through my stash and I found this. This is Hoffman's Stonehenge. Of course, I tend to do blues and teal, so I always buy collections of it. Thank goodness I had this, because tell me, do you think you could find something that goes better? So when I do the pieces, you're gonna see I'm using two different fabrics. The tip here is make sure you have enough fabric before you start. I was the fabric guys are watching me. I was very lucky. I had a substitute. Um, so I did, I think I ended up doing the triangle and a square with this because I just didn't have enough. Anyway, you'll see it, but it blends really well. Saved by the fabric guys. Once so let's again. talk about the shapes I'm using. Uh, I am using the new 8-inch Snails Trail that was introduced uh, a while ago, and that's the 55196. This is what the die looks like. And of course, if you know me, you know I mark all my dies because it's easier for me. I can't remember the numbers very well. But anyway, so I've marked them, and so it makes it easy for me to identify the shapes. I am going to need, if you look at the... Um, design as we talked about I'm going to need 16 of the snails trail so let's look at that for a moment so here's our shape I'm going to cut 16 of these to do that on the die I'm actually going to cut nine inch squares uh, in the blue green color and then in the white bubble and I'm going to cover the entire piece with the fabric so I uh, since I'm going to need um, 16 of them, I can stack up to six layers at a time on the die. Uh, I'm going to lay them down uh, in nine inch squares, uh, six blue green at a time, and do that until I have 16 and then do the white um, uh, until I have, and then I'm gonna separate them, stack them back on the die, and I'll show you that. Okay, so that is the uh, snail's trail portion. To create the sashing, this is the sashing, and what it really is, it's the, triangle in a square and you need the eight inch cube for that and this is shapes 13 and 14. now when you make it you make half of this shape you're going to make a triangle and a square so you'll actually have to make double the number i have figured out that i actually need 40 sashing strips and how that counts out is if you look at the sides i need one, two, three, four here, and I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So four times five is 20, and then I have four going the other way. So I need 20 going this way, 20 going that way. So I need a total of 40 sashing uh, rectangles or 80 triangles in a square. Do you understand, you got that? Because 
I need two for each one. So if I need a total of 40 of these, I'm going to have to make 80, so two together, which we will do. Last piece I need is the cornerstone, which sits right in the corners in between the sashing strips and everything else. And there is one, two, three, four, five, five rows. I need 25 cornerstone blocks. Now, what I've chosen to do is use the two inch finished square from the eight inch cube, uh, which is shape two. I'm using the shape five, which is the um, small half square triangle. And I'm using the um, cube shape number five, the smaller half square triangle as well. And those are the pieces that I'm going to use the um, cornerstones. I need 25 small squares because there's 25 blocks, but I will need of the, which is also the shape B on the block or the six inch shape five, I will need 100 pieces. And the reason I need 100 pieces is because there are four sides that it has to be sewn on those 25 blocks. So I need four for each block times four. 25, which means I need 100. So I'm going to need 100 of the 6-inch shape 5 and 100 of the 8-inch shape 5. Or if I choose to, I can go back to the snail's trail and cut, cut 100 shape B and 100 shape C. Keep in mind that the shape B actually must be the blue and the shape C must be the white for the colors to work out. Okay, let's sew. I'm working on the uh, triangle in the square and I cut the pieces and I fan folded everything as we talked about um, in my alternate fabric. <laughs> And uh, anyway, um, I didn't bother. Uh, they're still fan folded, which means there's some uh, right side up and some upside down, and that's okay. Um, as I sew through them, I'll separate them uh, because uh, I have the triangles I'm going to sew. So I'm gonna sew all up on one side. And as I uh, figure out, I'm gonna take two at a time because there's one right side up and one, you know, since I fan folded it. Uh, so one will be the correct way and the other will be the opposite since they were fan folded okay so i'm going to take the one that i need and put the other one aside and create a new stack which will have all of the ones i need for the other side so when i sew so here's my piece um and obviously i want them to go like this so i always this is kind of my test i look at it I go yep yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go and then i will fold it over um, match up the pieces you know it kind of looks awkward that way, but I find if you lay it this way and then turn it over, it, it, it makes it pretty visual, and then just make sure you keep doing them the same way every time. So let's sew it, shall we? I have 80. Of the triangle and a square. Now the one thing you want to make sure you do, if you're also doing these white, you probably folded these as well. There is a right way and a wrong way. Um, the paint seems to be thicker on one side, or the design, if you will. So anyway, I keep taking my um, half half square, rec half rectangles, I guess, and separating them as I go. You know, some people sit there and separate them ahead of time, but why bother? You've got to, you know, pick them up anyway, and you might as well just do it as you're sewing. It's quicker that way. Okay, and I'm taking another stack and I'm always just separating them. And the one thing I always do just for my own, um, you know, that's, sometimes, yeah, that's the right side, is I'll lay it down just to make sure, you know, that it's matching. I know it's kind of hard to see the angle, but just to make sure that that's the way it is before I flip it over. But also it's a good uh, plan to look at the one before and if it doesn't look exactly the same way, you're probably doing something wrong. Okay, so well, this what was this? Was this two? This was three. All right, so this is my third one. I have 77.
And this is my last one for this side. This is 80. Of course, that one would get caught, right? 80. Let me just stretch it a little. I used to, at this point, go and um, press my seams open, but I found out it's really not necessary. It just kind of takes time. So I just turn the blocks around. I reflip them. Um, and I will finger press it this way. And um, let's just see. Now this should be the opposite. Yeah, that works. I don't know if you can see it. Now I've got the halves left over. So there is my triangle in a square. And I just sewed up the side. These are the other halves I have left. When I separated them from fan folding. So let me do the first one. And now I'm starting at the skinny side before I was doing the fat side first. So, um, and I finger pressed it and I'm going to make sure the seams match. And that's one. Now, I really can't go and chain them like this. I mean, I can chain them together, uh, but I'm going to have to cut the other ones, the other 79. And I will as I go, uh, but this is a triangle and a square, um, and this is one. So I've done the one side, and now I'm gonna sew the other 79. I'm about halfway finished doing the second half of the uh, triangle in a square. And I know it's kind of hard from this angle. Let me pull it back a little for you so you could see um, here. I've got one half sewn. So what I'm gonna do is I just lay the piece like that. I haven't pressed it, I haven't done anything to it. Um, can you see it's just laying there? And I'm gonna take this new piece and I have the angle and I'm always gonna make sure I do skinny to the fat. That's kind of how I remember, you know, skinny side to the heavy fat side, so to speak. And uh, let me get my foot pedal. And I'm just gonna start it. And I go slow and I take about four or five stitches. Then I'll take this piece and fold it back because now it fits on my sewing board and I'm gonna finger press it right there. And I'm gonna take this piece and match it up. Look at how perfectly that lines up. Then I'm gonna give this a little tug just to make sure it's lined up here. And then I can sew. I like to keep the pieces here that I'm gonna sew. Um, and they're, uh, I don't know if you can see, I have them all stacked up on this side. Um, you know, like a little stack. And this way they're easy to get to. Oops, sorry. And this way they're easy to get to. So I'm just gonna start another one. And I turn the angle. If you notice when I match it, can you see that? Hmm. Right there, okay. Start, fold this back. Quick finger press. It's nice to have one nail there. If you don't have a nail, you could piece, use one of those little finger presser things or even a flat um, orange stick you know, used for manicures. Okay, I think I have about 37 or 38 to go. Okay, so I have my um, triangle and a square, and I'm going to have to sew two together. I made 80 of these units and I need to make 40 like this, the sashing. Now, I've sewn the uh, to the dark side. I always sew to the dark side. If I never say anything, I'm sewing to the dark side. The problem with that is when you go to put two of these together, your seams are not going to kiss. You know, if I had sewn one this way, pressed one this way and one that way, they would, but I didn't really want to get any ghosting here. So I left them out, and I just have to very carefully, when I put them together, make sure I am right on that seam there when I sew them together so that I will, um, it'll look good when I uh, open it up. So let's see if I can nail that, all right? 
All right, here goes. I'm going to match it again. All right, now I'm going to lift my presser foot up because I don't want to push the seam aside with the presser foot when I go to sew it, so I've left it on top of the bulk. Hoping that's going to help me. And I'm going to go and look at the other side. And I may have to stretch it or wiggle it a little, but at this point, that's okay. All right, now this may take a few attempts. I'm not always good at it the first time. See how we did. All right, I'm happy. So look, look, look here. There's your one side. Can you see it? And um, here's your other side. So I think that's okay. So I think if we're real careful, uh, we don't have to fold the other seam over. Um, and I think we'll be good. So um, I have uh, 39 to go. Now I'm going to sew the uh, setting cornerstones, or the setting stones, or the corners, whatever you want to call them. Anyway, and I needed the two-inch um, shape, the um, two-inch finished um, square, and that came from the eight-inch cube shape number two. And I need, as we talked about, the six-inch cube for the shape number five, and that's the way it goes. And then this is shape number five from the eight-inch, so these are both shape fives. Uh, this is a six inch cube, that's an eight inch cube. Um, so now uh, I'm going to sew them together. And this is the way it will fit. So that's pretty good if you can see. Uh, I've got a little space right there at the end. And there's a little bit there. So that fits very nicely and I'm just gonna let it overlap. So um, let me put the, set the camera up and we'll sew some. I have the square, and that's the shape number five from the six inch cube. So. Check, make sure my bubbles are right side up because I did fan fold them when I uh, cut them. So everything goes right sides together, and I'm just gonna make sure that the space on the, each side is about even. I have to make 25 cornerstones, the setting stones, uh, for each of the corners. Remember we counted them out? So um, I'm just checking to make sure. I have a habit of sewing things backwards, upside down. Okay, so that is uh, how many. I got uh, one, two, three, four. All right, 21 to go. Okay, last one. Make sure I do it right. Okay, sometimes they look, the front and the back look so similar. Until you sew it in, of course, and then you can see it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so now I'm gonna go and do the other side. So I had 25, I did one, so I'm only actually making 24, but this is what I'm making, a square and a square. And so I did the one side, so I'm just gonna turn them and I'm gonna drop them into my lap. I don't know if you can see it. And then I'm going to turn them around and line them up. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to go back and start on that other side and just leave them all sewn together. They'll just all hold hands and do exactly the same thing. I find this side easier because they kind of line up next to each other then. You know, and I just make sure I put it correctly and I press the, put the fabric towards the foot plate and it just catches. Okay, one more. Oops. Okay, so I've sewn uh, the squares and the shape number five from the six inch cube to either side of the square. So now I'm gonna go press them and I'm gonna press to the dark side as I always do.
I've pressed my two sides, so I have one on each side, and now I'm going to turn it and press two on the opposing sides. Now I chain these. Sometimes people say, oh no, you got to cut them, you got to cut them, but I just let them overlap. I kind of set them. I pick up the foot, I set the foot down. And again, yeah, take it and I line it up. And just let it overlap above, below, it doesn't matter. And this is still that uh, cube six, shape five. We're sewing all the blue ones, or this blue multicolor anyway. Let me can see. Okay, we're getting there. I can see this one better. There we go. See? And then I'll flip them and go on the other side, but I'll show you when I get to that. So I just did, oh, what do I got? One, two, three. So I got 22 more to go. All right, that's the last one. That's 25, and that's the third side. Uh, but I wanted to show you something. Um, when I sewed it, Notice there's like a little dog ear here and a little dog ear down here. Um, because when I did this, I sewed it. I really sewed it close to where um, the white patches. If I had sewn it like to the end to cover that, this would have been uh, perhaps, you know, moved out quite a bit. And um, I don't think it would have fit as well. So anyway, just and look at how nice that is. And I've got that space up here is going to be my quarter inch seam allowance when I sew it in. So I should be able to nail those points now. Okay, so say so just see it. So what I actually did is the point is up here on that piece. So I matched it and this one's here. So it actually fits quite good um, if you see. Okay, so that's kind of the way it should look. All right, so now I'm going to turn them around. I'm just going to grab them again. I'm going to put them in my lap, and I'm going to turn them over and lay them so that the edge that I haven't sewn is, you know, where it's going to be. And I straighten them out, and they just overlap. They'll be fine. And I'm going to go back to the first one, and that really looks good. Right against the edge. Can you see it? Okay. All right. This is the last side, and then I gotta go to the white. Another one. Four. Okay, so the first row and square and a square on the cornerstones are done. There you go. Okay, I gotta do one more. I'm gonna press these again to the dark side and I have 25. And I'll press them all out, which is the dark side. And uh, then all I have to do is put on the, um, the white ones. Now that sh was cube eight, shape five. All righty. I now have uh, 25, or 24 actually, uh, because I have the original piece that I was my sample that I had to use as a test to make sure I had the right sizes. So this is the uh, what I'm up to. So now I just have to add the uh, white um, half square triangles. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in the same exact manner. Make sure I'm putting right sides together. Now I'm looking to see how this fits. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit, I always try and center it, and I got a sense of where we're at. You can see there's a little tiny space there, and a little tiny space there. And so that's kind of center. You know, another trick you can also look at if you're trying to center them, see where your point is, see if your point lines up. 
with anything else. And that's a point. So it looks pretty good in the middle. So I think I'm happy with that placement. So that's the way I'm going to put them. And I always like to pick my presser foot up. I don't like to sew into it. That's how it eats my fabric. Oh, that doesn't sound like it's got any thread at all. You know, I don't know about you, but my machine, I really love my sewing machine, but I find that sometimes when I use the thread cutter, it doesn't always cut it long enough so it can catch it again, and I've got to go down and pull some thread out of the bobbin, and it just, just irritating, you know? It's those little things in life sometimes, and I just seem to have a lot of trouble getting started here. So here we go, one more time. Okay, third time's a charm. And again, I have 25. I did cut out 100 of these because I need to put one on each side, and we have 25, so that is 100. 25 times 4. Okay, let me do one more before I, through the magic of camera, instantly get finished, and you don't have to sit and watch. I'll do one more, because I want to show you also how it sews in. Okay, so let me pick one up, and let's see how we did. Okay, so there you go. I think that's really nice. It's got the point is there. It's got a lot of room, but it looks tight. So good. All right, I'm good to go. Three down, 22 to go. All right, last one on this side. This is the first row of white. So I'm going to turn them like I did before just by taking the entire stack and just turning them around, putting them in my lap, and then continue, and I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, so let me just do one. And get started, put my foot pedal underneath, make sure it's lined up. And I'm doing the other side now, and I got 24 to go. Okay, here's the snail's trail. This is the part we've been waiting for. Um, I kind of did the others first because I always find that if I save the exciting part to the end, it gives me more incentive to finish quicker because I want to get to this part. So that's kind of my little tip for that. Anyway, I've got my pieces all cut out. I'm ready to sew. And this is the original blue and green fabric. I've got them laid out on the die so I can sew them. And I'm going to start with the small squares. And I'm going to make a four batch. Okay, so um, to the sewing machine. I'm starting with the four patch. So what I'm going to do is string piece all the small squares together. That's shape A. So I'm going to do um, the blue green on the one side and I'm going to line up my whites on the other side so I can easily pick them up and match them up. Now these have been fan folded so some are right side up and some are wrong side up so I'm going to have to pay attention as I sew them together that I don't sew the wrong sides together because I've done that before. Okay. Just going to separate them. I'm actually going to just take a few, make sure they're right. And you could sit there and separate them all if you want. I find I don't mind sitting there separating them while I'm sewing, although I do have to be careful I don't forget. All right, so I'm going to start. I always put my fabric under my needle, and I'm going to set my stitch length, and off I go. So I'm checking each piece. The white ones are more difficult to tell, so I kind of have to put them under the light, but I'm just going to keep feeding them. Being careful to keep my quarter inch seam allowance, and also being careful to make sure that I sew the entire block straight. You know, I used to have a tendency to kind of pull as I was ending and it would curve off. Okay, so um, 
I have actually, I'm making uh, 16 blocks. So there's 32 of these I'm going to put together because once I'm done, I'm going to sew them into a four patch. Well, my two, the string piecing has been done and I cut all the little pieces up so it's just sewn together, you know, a blue, green, and, or light and a dark, if you will. Now I'm gonna open it and I just finger press them. I have found it really does work. Uh, you can still match things up because I'm having trouble getting them apart. But And I will always finger press to the dark side. Uh, and I actually, it's not really a finger press, I do a nail press. And I actually take my nail and I just scratch it. And even if you don't have much, you could just kind of go like this, you know, turn it over. So the, the hard side of your nail as opposed to your skin presses it. And it really does pretty good. And then I just put them opposite. Now, this, since you've put them both to the dark side, those little seams are going to match up perfectly. Can you see that? I'm going to move this light over a little. Let's just see if you can. There you go. So look. See, they kiss right there. Remember that keep it simple and smile method? There you go. You know why? Because it's simple to do, and when it works, you're going to smile. So here we go. Let's sew them together. I did one to start just to make sure it was right. Now I actually do lift my presser foot, even though I've put one in already. And as I may have mentioned to some of you, I do not sew end to end. I sew seam to seam. Because if you match those center seams up, everyone will think you're a genius because all the seams look even. Oh, see what I did? I made a mistake. I put it to the uh, light side instead of the dark side. So let me fix it. And the reason I knew that is that the seams uh, were not going to kiss. They were the same, going in the same direction. So now they're together. See, there's a blue on the one side and it's opposite on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna put another one in, lift my presser foot. And just so you can see, here's a, look at that, how perfect, look at that match. And the reason it matches is because the seams go in opposite directions and it allows them to kiss in the middle. Okay, so I uh, just got uh, 11, 12 more to sew together since I'm making 16 and I've done a few. Last one to kiss. Okay, so there we are. I've got 16 done. Now I can start uh, with the next shape and we'll start building our snail's trail. I'm first gonna go to the iron and I'm going to press these. I'm actually going to swirl the back of the seam. I'm going to clip those little threads that are right there so that the seams will lay. They'll actually swirl in four directions and I'm going to press those down and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm finished. Okay? There's the four patch. They're sewn together. I have 16 now. And I swirled my seams. See, that looks pretty now. It's flat. It's really nice and flat. Um, and as I said, when you do it, you just got to cut the top ends of the threads. And if you lay it down, you can kind of push it and they go around in one direction. You see that? So that's why they call it swirling. Okay, so now we're on to this was shape A. Guess what's next? B. Okay, so I took the bees. Now, I'm only going to use one color at a time. So I'm going to take the blues, the blue-greens, my multicolor, and I'm going to sew them onto one side and then the other side. Okay, now this is going to be the beginning of my pattern. 
So no matter how I sew these, I'm going to continue that throughout. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to lay this down. And now that's the right sides. I'm always going to place my block the same way when I sew it. So I'm going to turn it around towards me. And this block is on my left, which is your right. But anyway, and I'm going to lay this just like that yeah. and sew it just like you would any square you know sew a quarter square triangle to a square and I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to make sure I place it exactly the same way because I want all of the triangles to go in the same direction on that four patch. All right, that's two. Okay, one side is done, so I'm just gonna pull these through and turn them around and let them sit in my lap. So now I'm going to go do the other side because you know you need to the snails trail I have two colors so since I'm doing two colors I need a blue one to go this way and I need a blue one to go that way and then the whites are going to be in between if I was doing four colors I would now be picking up another color but I'm only doing two so now I'm going to put the um, remaining blue shape number uh, shape B on the other side of the four patch. And I always lift my press foot up. I also find as I do this, if you notice, these are the pieces I'm sewing on. I keep them in the direction they need to be placed. So this end is going to be there. So even though I may have to turn the piece over, I know the long edge goes here. And it keeps me from having to reposition every single piece in the proper direction. And half of these are perfect the way they are, and the other, because I fan fold it, I'll just flip around before I sew it. All right, I pressed the two dark, the blue multi to the outside. I'm gonna to press to the outside from now on. Now I'm gonna add my white, and this is still shape B. You'll do two, now from now on, you're always gonna start with the blue, and then you're going to do the white. So they just fit on the other opposite sides of the square. And we're going to chain piece them again. And I have all of the, you know, the blocks here, the units here, and I have the piece I'm putting on here. It makes it easy. It speeds it up. And if you guys have been watching any of my videos, you know, I always say I have this need for speed. You know, I want to be, have it look good, but I want to go fast. So I kind of set things up like an assembly line, and I can check as I go. I don't have to put, you know, I, other than having them placed in the position I want to sew them to keep me from sewing them backwards, um, I will check right side, wrong side up. Last one on that side. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull them through, put them in my lap, turn them over, and sew the last of the white shape bees on. Just check, make sure I got it right side.
to the ironing board. Okay, next row. Now I'm going to use shape C, which is the next size triangle. And just like I did before, I'm going to just separate the, the colors, the dark colors from the white ones and I'm not going to I'm going to do the dark ones first as I did before. Guess it would help if I put my sewing machine on. Now, if you notice uh, the way this is that this is starting to go this way. Okay? So I'm always going to want to sew the blue green so it follows that path. Because if I were to sew it here, you do, wouldn't start. You wouldn't get that swirl. It would disappear. So you always have to be careful. This is the critical placement. This next row, because if you do not put it in the right place, your pattern will be off. Okay, so that's the way we're going to sew it. So I'm going to fold it over, lay it down, and I'm going to notice that the white is at the top, so that I know. And actually, in the past, I've always sewn it to the right. This one happens to be sewn to the left. But it doesn't really matter as long as they're the same on all of the subsequent rows. So let me go to t reset my stitch length. <clears throat> and I'm going to just lay my blocks down over here. I have them to the side, but they're actually positioned the way they need to be placed, so there's a less likelihood of me making an error, which is easy for me to do. <coughs> so it's white up, upper right. Boy, they sure do fit nice. I'll tell you something, I did one snail's trail by hand. I cut it all by hand, and while I did get it together, and it looked pretty decent, uh, I did give it away as a gift, um, it took a lot longer, it took me a lot longer uh, to make a quilt than it does now. Um, i am probably been working on this quilt now, I would say for, oh, two or three days, okay, and that's not all the time, a couple hours here and there. And I've cut it out, and I have most of it sewn. You know, in the past, it would have probably taken me three or four days just to cut the fabric out, because you have to be precise, and, you know, there's only so much my hand could take. But anyway, uh, this really speeds up the process. Okay, I did the one side. And I'm checking. You can see the swirls going. You can see it's coming around. So let me turn these around. I'll do like I did before. Oh, i got to start at the other end. So I'm going to lay it down. And You could, don't have to open this up because it's not really in the way. You know, this is the piece you just sewed. It's not really in the way. So I'm just going to leave it there. It's fine. Then I'm going to sew up the other side. This one looks a little short. I'll just give it a little tug. See the pattern emerging? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now we're going to do white, but first I'm going to go and press out. All the seams are going to be pressed out. So now I'm going to do white. And I have all the pieces I'll just face up, and I have my triangles here. 
they get to have too big room, you just move them to the side, you know, if you don't have enough space. You don't want to feel cramped. So off I go again. Stitch a few. I just pull it so it fits. And I'll go get another block. And another row is done. Look at that. Okay. It's looking like a snail's trail. We got two more rows around to go. Okay, so um, I took a little break. It's the next day, but I'm ready to do some more snail's trail. I have two more complete rows to go which is, uh, you know, sewing one on each of the four sides. So I'm going to start as I have before um, with the blue-green colored fabric. And obviously, as we've talked about, you have to make sure the pieces continue to go in the same direction. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to lay it down for a moment, and I'm going to place it. Uh, and I just like to turn it around and look and make sure... You know, I'm doing it correctly so that I'm getting that swirl. It doesn't hurt to double check. Okay, that's the last one. That's 16 on that side. And as I've done before, I'll take them, turn them over, put them in my lap, lay them down again, and sew the other side. Well, it looks like I sewed a little something in there. Okay, get it lined up. Lift my foot. Remember, once you get the piece put in, stitch a little, and then go line up the other side. Okay, two sides done. It's getting larger. I'm getting there. Okay, see the swirl? See the snail's trail? Okay, now we're going to do the white. I do have to clip these, and I'm going to turn them and sew up one side and down the other again. Off I go. I'm on the third side on the white. Okay, so just to make sure you got it. There we go. We're sewing the white one on. 
kind of hard. I don't have enough. Oh, there's one more piece I can take that. Let's look. Yeah. And I just keep them strung together. So I'm doing the third side. I'm sewing this on. And actually, when you match it, um, there's an end. If you look on the other side, it's like square. Um, so when you put that piece, there's a square piece. There's a, you know, where the dog ears are cut off. Let me give, show you one. Um, it's not been sewn. So here's the block. And I kind of, yeah, just finger press that. I use my nail. And I'm looking to make sure I have it right sides down. And I'm going to square it off right where that square is is where I'm going to lay the piece so the square actually meets the square there. And that's going to let me match up the other square um, right where it belongs. And look at the point in the middle. See? That's what you want. Okay, so I'm going to finish these. dump it all in my lap again. I mean, they're getting bigger, but the concept, you could still do it. You know, they just get a little bit more awkward, a little more to handle. I'm just checking, make sure I'm right sides down, and I'm going to do the other side. So there's one more series of rows after this. And then all our pieces are done. And we can assemble the quilt. I still have the one row to sew back on here, you know, uh, the set of four um, triangles, but at this point, this measures six and a half inches. So if you had a six inch cube, you could take pieces from that and make blocks that would go with this. It would be really cool. But I'm gonna add the other rows, uh, which actually then finishes it at eight inches. And I actually have an eight inch cube, so, um, uh, there's a lot you can do with this is snails trail it's really kind of cool uh, because I can leave it this way and it's a perfectly good snails trail it's just a small one so the die is pretty versatile you just have to not cut the last two pieces which would be the um, uh, shapes E uh, if you did only wanted the six inch size finished okay so but anyway uh, I've pressed this and we're gonna sew the and this is the back uh, so it's uh, looking good um, and we're going to sew the last rows on. I'm going to do the blue-green, and then I'm going to turn it and do the white. Okay, so here we go. And onto my lap, turn them over, and off I go. white and then our eight inch snails trail block is finished I'm excited okay so I'm gonna cut these apart careful not to cut the blocks okay Let's see last two Mm. 
right, I'm gonna open it up, quick finger press, check which side. Last turn, last side, that's the white, and it's just to the prep ironing board when I'm done. And this, these blocks are finished. Yay! There's nothing more fun for me than finishing the block, except maybe starting a new project. Alrighty, 16 snails trails blocks. I'm done. Yeah, here you go. Okay, all I need is a quick press and my 8 inch, my 16 8 inch snails trail blocks are done. All my pieces are done. My sashing, my cornerstones, and my snails trail, and I'm ready to put quilt together. All right, so all my pieces are sewn, and I actually have them stacked. I am ready to sew. Now I'm going to do rows. I'm going to do, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five rows that have four of the small say, uh, cornerstones, five, excuse me, five, one, two, three, four, five, and four of the sashing strips, and I have them all counted out right here. So I've put five and four together in stacks, and I've stacked them so that I can just go ahead and start sewing them together. Um, and then for the second row, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five sashing strips and four snails trail blocks, which I've also marked. I've taken five sashing strips and four snails trails, and I've stacked, and I'm gonna make four of those rows. So this has five rows, and then the snails trail will have four. So I'm gonna sew them together in strips. And I'll just start them and show you how I do it. Uh, but that's really all it takes to do it, just sew them together in strips. And okay, so now I'm going to do the four, uh, the five um, uh, smaller strips, uh, which includes the four sashing strips and five of the cornerstones. And I'm gonna start, I have to start and end with a cornerstone. So I'm gonna put one on one side and I'm going to turn, let's just put these on the side for now. So I'm going to take one. Now what I really wanna do is I wanna make sure I match this point right here. So when I sew down, I wanna nail that point. So that's where I'm gonna really concentrate lining it up. So I'm gonna lay it down and I'm going to take one of these, and this also has a point, so I'm going to be matching points. So I'm going to play with it and just turn. If you can see here, this is really what you want to do. You want to match the two points together like that. I'm not as concerned how this side or this side looks. I'm concerned about my point. So, And I also want to obviously make sure they're straight. So there's my point, this one, all right. So I think I can do it, it looks straight, so I'm gonna start. Um, I wanna move this a little bit, okay. You know, sometimes just a slightly different layout will affect the way it looks. You wanna make sure you're not stretching the pieces either. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew through. Stopping right there at that seam so I can realign this side to make sure I still like the way it looks. Okay. Now, I tend to be the one that likes the speed again, so I'm gonna actually sew all the five strips together at one time. Simply, uh, I'm gonna sew this to this, then that to that, then that. I'm gonna make the five of them at one time, like chain piecing them together. So, what I need now is I need another square and I'm going to sew two more together, 
And I'm going to do this five times because that would be my five sets of sashing strips. Okay, so feed the next one. Want that to fold over. Stop at the point. Make sure you're lined up and keep sewing. So that's two. I'm going to do five. Stop at the point, check my seam, okay. All right, this is four, I'm putting four together, matching that point up, laying them down, making sure they're straight. Stop at the point, realign. Okay, and now this is the fifth one. This will be the last one because I need five rows of sashing strips. Let me line it up at the point. Okay, straighten it out. Okay, so across. And now I will cut it off. Now, let's just look. Um, they're a little backwards, but I'm going to turn it around so you can see. And there's my point. I think that looks pretty good. Now the edges may be off a little. If you look at it, you know, your end, oh, actually that one's pretty good. You know, but they may not be exactly right here at the seam. I'm not that concerned because this is a perfect point. And if there's a little bit off on the seams, I could go ahead and um, fix that later when I sew in the next row. Anyway, so I have now sewn these five together. I want to just kind of show you what it looks like. If we can pick this back up a little bit. Let's see. All right, here I am, folks. Okay, so here, this is what I've done. I've actually chained the five of them together, so kind of like a little row. And those are my five rows. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start sewing to them and just feed them through all together at the same time. So I'm going to lay them down. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to lay them down. So I'm going to now, my point is now to sew another square to this side over here. Okay, so let us move back down to where we were. I'm going to move the camera down, and I'll just kind of... Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so, so now, as I said, I'm going to lay it down. These are all towards me. So I have this piece flat. This is the end, and I'm going to go ahead and get another square, and I'm going to lay it onto that point just like I did the others, and make sure it's pretty even across and I'll sew it in place. Now I lined that one up pretty good so I didn't stop at the seam. So now I'll take the next one, because they're sewn together, remember we sewed them together, open it up, put another square, make sure I'm matching the points. That's the most important thing, to make sure those little points are matched up when you're here. Stop there in the middle, realign this. Now I want you to, uh, actually let me just keep sewing, but um, you know, as I said, the raw edges aren't always even even, but you can always fix that because when you sew, you know, you'll sew a straight seam and you'll never know that those edges were uneven. Um, so my big key is making sure I nail that point in the middle with that quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so this, that was three, this is four. And match it up, straighten them out, feed it through. And I have one more and we'll take a look at it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish it because it's pretty much just sewing more onto these strips. Okay, so those are sewn. Now I just want you to look, each one now is a strip of a square, a sashing, and a square. Now if you notice, look at this, how far, this looks like it's like really off, like we're actually probably like a quarter of an inch, but my point 
matches right there. And this is actually fairly straight. So what I'll do is when I sew it together, I'm just gonna ignore that that's long because it will sew together still perfectly because I'm gonna match this point and that point up and it will come together. All right, so I'm gonna continue sewing these until I have five corner stones and four of these sewn in place and then my skinny strips will be done. It'll be time to move on to the others. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this and I'll get back to you when I'm done. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I finished all the sashing rows. I'm gonna pull the camera up so I can kind of show you. Here we go. So I've just taken it out of the machine and this is what I've sewn. Okay, and I did it in rows because it's just easier to sew that way. Uh, so now I'll cut them all apart. And uh, now I'm gonna go on and make the ones with the snail's trails. And it's gonna be the same process, but I'll show you one. Um, just so you could see. Okay, so let's go back and look at this, this design one more time uh, because there is a tricky part to it you need to be aware of. Um, each of the uh, sashing rows we did are very straightforward. and We did the five, we sewed them together. When we sew the second rows together, which is the sashing strip going the other way, uh, the snail's trail, the sashing, the snails, the sashing, the snails. You have to be careful because if you look, the white piece is here on the first one, and on the second one, it's opposite. And you really need it because if you look, you start getting these designs going. So they have to be placed alternately. The first row, I have the white in the upper corner. The second row, I have the color. The third row, the white. And the fourth row, the color. So which means is you need two rows this way and two rows that way. So all right, so now I'm going to sew the sashing strip and the snail's trail together, okay? And in this case, before I sewed them this way, now I'm gonna sew them width way because they have to be the um, vertical versus the horizontal strips, okay? So same process um, as I did before. I'm going to match this point with the uh, point where the um, snail's trail come in. Now, word of caution, make sure you make these all going in the same direction. So pick your position that your white's gonna be in the upper corner or your multicolor's gonna be in the upper corner, whoever you're gonna do, it, and stick with that layout so that they're all going in the same direction when you're done sewing, okay? So um, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to lay the snail's trail down. I just like to lay the bigger piece down. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm gonna match those points up like we talked about. And then I'm gonna mark the, match the end up. And as I always do, I stop at the point so then I can line up the second half. And actually, I really don't want to cut that off. I cut that off, but I'm going to go back and sew it. So I'm going to do the same thing and strip them together the way they did. I did the other. So I'm going to make four sets. So I'm taking another snail's trail, and I'm taking another sashing piece, and I'm just sewing it like I would strip piece um, another set together. So there I go with my point, and I've got that straight. So I'll turn it, feed it into the machine. the point, straighten this side out. Okay, now I'll go take a third one. I need how many altogether? Four sets, okay. And line it up. And sew to the middle. And stop. And then straighten it out. And then I have one more. And then I'm going to back them up and then I'll add the next piece. Okay? So here's the white. The snail's trail. Here's the sashing. Match the point. There it is. And so. Okay, 
Okay, then I, I'll stop it now that I have the four. And um, you can see, just like, you know, I've sewn it together, and I'm going to back them up, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to open these two, so I have a snail's trail and a sashing, and now I'm going to sew a snail's trail to it. And you just alternate, and you continue sewing the rows until you have these done, and you're making four of these strips. The other ones we made five because we start and end with that and these are going to be in the middle. So I'm going to continue sewing. Stop in the middle, match my other end up, and I will see you when I'm done with this. Let's look at it. I just sewed them together. So there's my white. Okay. And then I have blue and blue. And if you look at the design, the two pieces here, here's your white. There's a blue on this side and a blue on that. So they actually have to be opposite. So the white is on the left, and then the white is on the right. And then the white is on the left, and then the white is on the right. And then you finish, because you have four blocks. So what happens is you're now creating a kind of a design within a design by alternating the snail's trails blocks. Now they were all sewn in the same direction, sewn the same way, but by rotating them, you get the different look. Okay, so all you have to do is take a block you've sewn this way and turn it 45 degrees and then your blue will be here and it will be correct. So you're going to make two rows, starting with the white uh, in the upper left hand corner and alternating. And then you're going to make two rows with the dark in the upper right hand corner and you're going to alternate. So it's dark and if you see there's two lights now, then the dark and a dark and then a light and a light. So that is the pattern, okay? So let me just turn it and you can see you kind of get a swirl going. Um, and that gives you a lot of that movement as well, uh, in addition to having those uh, 13 and 14 pieces in the sashing. Okay, so now we have to sew them together. And it's very easy. We're going to take one sashing strip that's sewn, and we're going to sew it to one snail's trail strip and one sashing. Now make sure you alternate the snail's trail so the first row has the white, the second has the color, the third has the white, and the fourth has the color, and then you will get this interlaced design. I'm getting ready to lay out the strips, and I just wanted to make sure um, that we did it correctly. Now, I have not pressed these strips at all. Um, I used to press everything like a crazy woman, and then I discovered that I always ended up pressing the seams in the wrong direction, and then I had to repress them. So I do it without pressing. Uh, the first thing I want to do is when I look at my drawing, I want to make sure that I start with the sashing and the white piece in the corner. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to sew this to this, then put another piece, this piece of sashing and continue down. But I just wanted to make sure that we all started in the same place. So you're going to have the oppos opposing colors. I'm going to fold it over, and then as I sew, I'm going to alternate my seams. So I'm going to take them and sew them in opposite directions so that they will lay flat. And also by doing this, I can kiss my seams together. You remember that keep it simple and smile method? Um, so that you will have perfect seams when you... Um, uh, finish sewing it and turn it uh, right side out. So I'm going to go ahead and sew, making sure I get through the notch, press my seams, and you know, not press, but push my seams in opposite directions, make sure I match up my seams here and work my way across until I'm done, and then I'm going to continue all the way, okay? So that is going to be how we do our quilt. Fold it over, and I'm going to work my way down, making sure my first one with the snail's trail has the white piece in the corner. And then when I go and get my second piece, because I have two each way, I have to make sure I use it with the color in the corner, if you can see that one here. Okay, so this has the color in the corner, right? 
So that will be the second row. The first one has the white. And then the second one will have the color. Okay, so um, you wouldn't know this, but it's been a really long time between the last time I filmed part of the Snails Trail Storm at Sea quilt, uh, and now it's about two months. And the reason being is I started quilting it and I hated it. It looked horrible. I just didn't like it. I was off that day. I quilted about eight inches or 10 inches of the whole quilt, decided I didn't like it, ripped it off the quilt uh, rack, and spent about four days picking out every single stitch. I put new batting, new backing. I threw it back up on the frame and I've done now a different pattern and I've decided to rely on the old ruler. Um, I decided I was gonna tackle this with it because if I do another free motion one and I have to rip it out, I'm gonna throw the quilt out. I'm sure you know how I feel. Anyway, I'm really pleased with the way it's coming out. I'm almost done. And now that I've mastered it and perfected what I want to do, I'm going to show you what I finally um, decided. I'm almost done. I'm actually at the last course. This is the last row right here. These, This is like the four and a half inch. That's this row right here. It's the very last one. Uh, it's the sashing rows. Um, anyway, um, I've done here and I've done here. Now, I don't know. I'm going to move this over. I don't know if you can see. This is one of the ones I ripped out. And there's little traces of holes right here from the old one and right here you could see them uh anyway i'm going to attempt once i'm done with this i'm going to throw it in the washer and the dryer and hope that they disappear if not i'm probably going to take out my paint set and paint the holes closed or something i'm doing two different patterns um, on the shapes and what i'm only quilting in is the white all of the blue colors are not quilted and what happens when you quilt the more you quilt in an area the further back that design recedes. And if you, the less you quilt, the more it pops forward. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen when I'm all done, the blue waves are gonna stand out uh, as much more dominant and the white back be just out of background. I did do circles. All of these are little circles here, but I first outlined every of the snail's trail sections. And then these are actually just stripes up and down that I coursed in them, you know, that I pointed in the middle. Uh, my next piece I've got set up, uh, I'm going to be doing this section right here, hopefully um, with the ruler. And I find it's easy just to clip these little threads while you can. Uh, let's see if this arm is in the way it is. So let's move this arm up. I am going to have, you know, I'm going to try and move you here. I'm trying to see where I'm going to put my ruler so you could still see it. Okay. So I think we'll be okay. And if I can get in there, How's that look? Yeah, that's not too bad. The first thing I'm gonna do is outline it. So I'm placing my ruler about a quarter of an inch uh, from the seam. Now I found that I can actually continue sewing as I change my ruler, keep it and let it go stick, 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 you know, uh, up and down. Uh, but for the purposes of this, I want you to see it and I don't wanna really write off the end. So I'll stop. Then I'm going to turn it. I'm eyeballing this. You know, after a while as a quilter, you know what a quarter of an inch seam is. So you get pretty close. I mean, you know, I wouldn't do it when I was stitching pieces, but for this, it's good. All right, so I've outlined it. Now I'm going to do a line straight down the middle. And again, I'm going to offset my ruler by about a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to do the other ones. And I'm just going to tilt my ruler a little. And I'm going to sew up to the seam line. Then I'm going to tilt it back. Then I'm going to come out and do another one. And I'm going to go back. Then I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to come across and tilt back. And the last one. So I'm pretty pleased. That's going pretty fast. And hopefully you can see it. I now have five stripes there. Now, obviously, once I get the machine out of the way, it's a little easier. I'm going to start the machine over here. I do pick up and drop it down each time. Um, so that was my first section. Now I'm going to do, uh, that's the sashing. Uh, and now I'm going to actually do the snail's trail. Now this, by the way, is the new uh, small snail's trail block. And I think it finishes at an eight inch. I don't have my ruler here. You think I would know. Uh, so let's just see. Yeah, this finishes. This is an eight inch finished block uh, and that's uh, fairly new uh, and I actually love it. I think it's a great size. So here we go. I'm just going to go up the side. 
and switch my rule. I'm going to keep it running. And keep it running. And keep it running. And go over this way. Now I'm improving because this time I've only broken one needle. Uh, the last time when I did the chimney sweep, which was my first one, I broke three needles. So I hope I don't jinx this. Did you can tell? Let me just do this because I kind of, my arm couldn't go in that direction anymore. All right, so I actually have outlined that piece. You can see I have it outlined. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my bubbles in. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this white fabric actually has bubbles in it. And I think that's what gave me the inspiration to do the box. You could see them here. You can see the little bubbles here. Um, if you look closely, it's like bubble fabric. I just thought it looked like bubbles in the ocean, which is why I selected it. So let me go around here. I'm going to do circles now. I shouldn't say I'm doing circles. I'm doing bubbles. Round. The key to making circles is going around the circle one and a half times before you break off to do the next circle. If you notice, I'm going back around again. And what it does is it gives a kind of a, a roundness, or even if they're not perfectly round, they look round. just because I think they're enclosed totally. I was watching a video one time and it was a tip they gave me. I didn't figure it out by myself, but I will tell you it really does help to go, make sure you close every single circle before you go to the next one. In this case, I'm gonna back up and just come around here. And I like to do big circles and little circles. I think it gives it kind of more interest in trying to make everything the same. Also, I don't think I could sew them all the same if I tried, so um, now we'll make this one a little big. Let's get a big one right here. Look at that. Okay, and I'm going to go around. I actually have gotten pretty good at making these circles, so I kind of find it relaxing. You just to watch the little circles form as you swirl around with the machine. And I'll go all the way into this little piece. And come around and then rather than go I'm gonna go right over and start this one and then I'll come back and outline it because it's kind of I can continue the swirls and the curls and I'm kind of in that mode right now I'll do a big one right here and then come back and close this and there's nothing wrong with sneaking around the side back up a little on that one and it's okay as long as you close the circle it's all right to backtrack up here just I don't like a lot of little spaces so I'll show a little tiny use tiny circles in there and go ahead now and outline it The hardest part when I do this is to keep the needle in one place while I move the ruler. It tends to have a mind of its own or I'm just not paying attention. Let me move this. And it slides all over the place. That is how I quilted the snail's trail portion. Now the only part I haven't shown you yet is the cornerstone. Um, right, this is the uh, setting cornerstone, I guess, uh, for the sashing. So we have the triangle and a square, the snail's trail, and these are the cornerstones, which is a square and a square and a square, not to be confused with a square on point. And I believe this finishes at two inches. So uh, we're gonna just do the last one. I'm gonna outline it, then outline this, then outline this, then we'll do bubbles in the middle. So I just wanted to let you know what we were gonna be doing. So up. I'll go around first and I actually did the bottom already so I'm going to just go to the corners these sides one two three and let's get it over here four okay needle up 
bring it into the center. I do talk to myself sometimes. Well, most of the time. <laughs> oh gosh, all right, let's go this way. Stop, move, line it up. And just, I'm gonna go this way. I don't know if it's any clearer, but. And if you noticed, I stopped. Yeah, whenever I kind of forget where I'm going or I've you know, lost track or my arm is getting tired, I'll just stop where I am. So now we'll just do the inside and the little bubbles. cornerstone and I've only got a few more to go I'm almost at the end I just have to do this and this and then I'm going to cut it off the frame and put the binding on and then I will show you what the finished product looks like okay well I finally finished it and I'm not going to tell you about the other problems I had between <laughs> finish the quilting taking it off the rack and all that other but anyway I persevered and I've finished it and I love it i'm so happy i ripped it out i'm so happy i took the time to do that because now i'm really proud of it before i probably would have thrown it in the garbage but you know sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and do it and i didn't give my didn't rush myself i just picked it out fixed it and now i'm really thrilled um i've washed it um, there's some of those little pinholes that I ripped out are still showing, but I've decided to leave them as they are because I think overall, I think it looks really good. Um, by washing it, the blue seems to have come forward a bit and the white is receded. But what I really like are the way the little bubbles look. And what's interesting in the corner points, I only did the circles for the little bubbles in the middle, but it wrinkled enough here. And with the dots on the fabric, it looks like they're there also. So that is my snail's storm that's what i'm calling it my snail storm i think it's appropriate so um hope you like it please if you do follow me on facebook and my blog like me um like my youtube channel hope you've enjoyed this um my website is fontana originals have a nice day and happy quilting. One last shot. Here's the quilting. And that is Snail's Storm.